Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the GPU Technology Conference in San Jose, and I'm here with Rob. You know, it's great to be here. I understand we've got some exciting new hardware to talk about, but, but let's get situated first. What's your day job at NVIDIA? My day job? I am the chief platform architect for our Tesla products, which are data center products. And I spend most of my time working with uh, hyperscale customers, the, the big guys in the, in the world, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Ali, Tencent. Okay, and what's the what's the what's this device here? Can you tell me? So this is um, this is the HDX uh, reference platform. It's um, it's a system with eight of our uh, you know our high end GP100 GPUs um, connected in a very complex uh, hybrid cube mesh with NVLink, and it turns out this is such a difficult thing to get right that we we've, we've uh, tried to make it a reference design. This system is the first real uh, embodiment of that. This is the HTX1 system mm -hmm. um, that we worked with Microsoft on, and this is uh, this is going to be a contribution to the Open Compute. Oh, open uh, Compute, yeah. yeah. Is this part of Project Olympus by chance? It is, it is. It is. Okay. This is a yeah. full member of the Project Olympus team. Okay, okay. Real hardware and... I, I guess they're going to buy a lot of these, and I've, is it? And, yeah, <laughs> we're all hoping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so you want to make it easier for people to deploy this technology? How do you go about making it easier? Um, well, the, I, I mean, first, the reason it's hard is that uh, in order to provide this much performance, and you know, this is this is an amazing platform. Um, it really pushes the bounds, you know, electrically, um, thermally, mechanically. And it turns out it's very hard. So what we've done is, is we've got a reference design, uh, the uh, NVLink hybrid cube mesh topology. It's, um, it's a very richly connected fabric, and it's important for the GPU to GPU communication that makes deep learning and HPC work. Um, and then uh, out of that complex, we've got connections that can go to a host server. Um, and at that point, people are on their own. People are pretty good at making servers. Okay. And you got all this GPU density in a very small space. How are you keeping this cool? It, <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. So um, you'll notice there are no heat sinks on this. Yeah. And the reason is, is uh, we've got, um, it's a modular heat sink design. So some people, uh, for example, in the HDX1, they want very large heat sinks for relatively low air velocity cooling. Other people, on the other extreme, some HPC people are uh, using liquid cooling mm -hmm. to keep the density high and the dyes temperatures down. So it's it's a huge problem um, for anybody taking that on, and that's having the underlying system um, just makes it that much easier for them. And who would be the typical customer for this? Like, so say a super micro kind of company might take this reference design, or who'd, yeah, who'd, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, no, that's exactly right. No EM could take this and run with it. Um, mm -hmm. well, obviously, a hyperscale could could take the concept and run with it. Um, uh, right now, it's mostly hyperscales, but we're hoping that the reach really gets broad. A lot of people want to use a system like this. It's just really hard to build a system like this. Yeah, yeah. And, and especially something like this that hyperscale, so potentially hundreds or thousands of racks full of these devices. Yeah, I, I, yeah or tens of thousands. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And Okay, so workload-wise, we're uh -huh. talking what deep learning, that kind of thing. It's, it's. Um, I think the real driver right now is deep learning, but yep. we're also seeing huge traction with H, uh, you know, traditional HPC. But yeah, deep learning is is uh, really the thing driving the adoption of this. And deep learning training mm -hmm. can easily consume the resources in this system. And in fact, you'll see the InfiniBand uh, cards in the back there, and that's because you can start um, scaling out to multiple systems. Deep learning can really, really consume all the co compute capability you can throw at it. And I, I don't want to let you go without talking about the Saturn V uh, cluster. Oh, okay. Yeah, Very yeah. Cool. That wasn't built on this form factor, was it? As, no, as, uh, but it does uh, fundamentally use this system here. Okay. So it, it is it is uh, built out of these, scaled out to a, a very large it's, size. Because I, I, I was wondering, what are the lessons learned? You built this big cluster. It's on the top 500, right? For your own uh, use, uh, right? And, right and, here. And it's the top green. Uh, you know, oh. it's number one top green 500. Okay. So, so, you know, definitely a success, but. Uh, what did you take from that when you went to this level? Um, I think that, well, there were a couple of things. One, things get harder when you scale. It's, it's surprising. Scale is its own problem. <laughs> yeah. um, and also, I think that the modularity and serviceability of the system uh, is, is a real key. 
and also uh, having the separation of the, you know, whether it's connected directly with connectors, um, the, the separation of the server node and the GPU complex, and then obviously the rich interconnect between the systems themselves. And that, yeah. again, that's why you see uh, 400 gig InfiniBands here. You know, it's great to see this innovation with things like uh, Project Olympus and you guys working with uh, Azure to build these giant farms for deep learning. It's, it's kind of, it sounds like the sky's the limit on what's possible. It, it is, and not only is there a huge demand for people to buy and deploy big systems themselves, mm -hmm. but there's a huge demand in the cloud already. I mean, you know, we, we saw some announcements and um, uh, it's just, it's really grow, growing rapidly. It's, from my perspective, it is the new compute model and uh, it's very, very exciting.